Hello, hello everyone, it's Cassie and welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. Today we're going to be making a little fun spin on a gatefold card and this is the product we're going to be using today. We're using the new Wildflower Garden. It's so cute uh, and it has matching dies to go along with it and those dies will even cut out the sentiments which is wonderful. We're also going to be using the polka dot pattern background and so let's go ahead and get started. I have some watercolor cardstock from, it's the Distress Watercolor cardstock, and the one side is textured while the other side is smooth. I'm going to use the smooth side, and I'm kind of pushing everything more towards the top. I have about a two inch border on the bottom. I'm inking everything up using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is perfect for watercolor. Yes, I'm going to do some watercoloring. I'm going to use the new Distress Watercolor pencils. Now, they're not all new. And there are six sets. I only have three, but I'm going to use one set. I'm going to use set number six. I decided, you know, obviously not all of us can do all the things or buy all the things, right? So I wanted to share uh, just using maybe one palette. So I chose this one. It had a couple of greens in it. And as you know, if you've watched any of my videos or any videos on watercolor pencils, there are several ways that you can use them. That first way that I showed you was using the crayon or the pencil right on the paper. That will give you some pencil lines. If that's what you're going for, that's a great technique to do. My favorite way to use the watercolor pencils is actually to bring my water brush right to the pencil itself and take that pigment right off of the pencil. And so when I'm coming in with pigment, you'll see that that's really what I'm doing. Or I guess you won't see, you're gonna have to take my word for it because I don't have it on screen. <laughs> but I'm bringing my watercolor pen right to the pencil and taking that pigment. And like any watercolor, we are working in layers. So I'm putting down that first wash of color. And once that dries, we can come back in with a second layer. So that first color I'm using is the forest moss. I'll go ahead and tell you what those colors are as I bring them up. But again, they all come from palette number six. And so I'll finish up the leaves that I want to do with our forest moss. And then we'll come back in and we will um, add some extra layers to it and, and blend that color out a little bit. I am going to speed this up about four times coming up here in a bit because there's a lot of coloring that's going on. But you'll see, you'll get the gist of all that I'm doing and it's the same process all along. I don't necessarily have like a light source. I'm just kind of going with where I want the darker bit to be and the lighter bit to be but definitely trying to make the darker colors more in the background. And then we're gonna move on to some bundled sage after we're done adding our darker shades of that forest moss. So the bundled sage is the other green color and now we've sped it up about four times. I'm really enjoying these watercolor pencils. I may have to bite the bullet <laughs> and get the other palettes because as I mentioned before in using these, if you've seen my video before of using the watercolor pencils, I really do love everything matchy-matchy. I have a couple of different sets of watercolor pencils, and they're all great. I have the Nuva ones. I have some Arteza ones. But I do love how pigmented these ones are, and I really do love, again, the matchy-matchy. So since I have all of the Distress inks and all of the Distress Oxide inks, it's fun to have the, the pencils to go along with it. So that red that we used is some lumberjack plaid. Our purple is some dusty concord. I add a little bit of spun sugar to the top of that to make it look kind of like a little bit of a thistle. I don't know if that's what it is, but that's what I'm coloring it like. And then we've got some more spun sugar that we're adding to some of the other flowers. This palette was just great for this. It didn't have a yellow in it but it does have brush corduroy. And if you use the brush corduroy, like I'm using here in a light sense, it does look a little bit yellow. Now I'm bringing that pencil right to the center to make it look a little bit more brown in the center. But I guess that's a good way to show you that you can stretch your supplies, even if you only have limited colors. Maybe that I'll do a video on that where you just have some limited colors, two or three, or maybe three or four limited colors and see what you can do with it. So yeah, adding a little bit more color to that center, trying to keep some white in there as well, just to add that depth and dimension. We've got three colors of blue. This one is our Broken China. We also have some Stormy Sky and then Blueprint Sketches in there as well. I don't use Blueprint Sketch in this particular set of flowers. It's a little bit more of a brighter blue. We also have Abandoned Coral, which I'm using here. 
So you can see why I decided to use this particular set of watercolor pencils because it did have a good array of color. I think they all have a pretty good array of color, but this is the one I grabbed of the three that I have. So again, working in layers, adding that color where I want. We're going to use some dried marigold on those lily. I think those are lilies. I'm not great with my flowers, but we'll add a little bit of that dried marigold to the center just to add some of the color. Then we'll finish up the flowers with this blue. That's the stormy sky. And then we have to color up our butterflies as well. And we'll use some dusty Concord and some stormy sky on those. Actually, it might be Lost Shadow. I can't remember which one I use because it does have a gray in there as well. But I'm so happy with how these turned out. Now, I did put the butterflies and the bees up at the top. That's not how they're going to stay because we're going to die cut those out. And we're going to do a little bit of partial die cutting here as well. Uh, we're going to do something fun with the butterflies and the bees. So now that they're all done, I'll show you how that looks. I love the look of watercolor. It's so fun. And then we're going to bring in the matching dies. So I'm going to die cut out all of our little butterflies and bees first. Tack that down with a little bit of mint tape, run that through the die cutting machine, and then we'll set those off to the side. While I have those dies out, I am also going to die cut an extra piece just out of white cardstock, and you'll see why we do that later. I'll bring in the big die, and we're going to do partial die cutting on this because I want that white border at the bottom. And if we're talking about partial die cutting, you want to put your plate over whatever it is you want to die cut. You leave out what you don't want die cut, which is that bottom section, as you can see. So I'll run this through my die cutting machine just like that. And that will leave the, the bottom connected, as you can see here. I do need to trim that down. You could use scissors if you want, but I want that to be nice and straight. So I am going to bring in my paper trimmer. Finally replace the blades on this baby. And so all we're going to do is just line that up at the two inch line. And we'll bring the blade down until it gets pretty close. If you can't get it all the way there, don't worry about it. Just use your scissors to trim off the little bit of excess, which is what I have to do here, which is fine. And look at how fun that looks. So now we're going to trim down our card base, which measures uh, four and a quarter by 11 inches. And so that's at two inches. So this is where I need to score at two inches. I want that border at the bottom. Normally as a gatefold, you'd score them both the same, but because that front is five and a half, you know, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, that's what an A2 size card is closed up. We already scored at two inches. So if you take two inches off five and a half, you're gonna score this next one at three and a half inches, okay? So we're gonna attach our flowers to the front just like that. So fun. So like I said, a little bit of a different take on the gate. Let's say it's the same. It's just not evenly scored. So it'll, it'll score on the side there. And I'm using my Teflon folder, Teflon ergonomic folder from Trinity Stamps. And that's going to be our base. So like I said, I wanted to do something fun with our butterflies and our bees. So we're going to take some leftover acetate that I have. I'm sure we all have some of that in our stash. And I'm going to trim this down. I need tiny little pieces, long tiny pieces. So I'm cutting those at about roughly a quarter of an inch. And then I don't know how long they are, maybe two inches. They don't need to be that long, but this is what I'm doing. And I did cut four because I wasn't sure if I wanted all four of those to be hanging off or I just want three. So we're going to do three. So what I did is I put a little bit of glue at the tip. I'm going to put one of the butterflies on there. And then on the back, I'm going to glue down that other white piece that I went ahead and die cut out. All that's gonna do is sandwich the acetate in between and give it a more complete look. So it makes it just a little bit more sturdy as well. So we'll do that with one of the bees and the last butterfly. Same process, put a little bit of glue at the tip, put our bee down, flip it over, and then our little white die cut bee we'll put down on the back. So I obviously, you guys know where I'm going with this. And you saw the picture ahead of time, so you know that as well. You know from that as well. And then our last little butterfly. 
I decided to save the, the other bee for, um, to pop up on the front on one of the flowers. I just thought that would be really cute. And then, you know, using those, the, the rule of odds, then we only have three pieces sticking up. So I'll put a little glue on the one piece, stick my panel down on top of that. And I did die cut the flowers out of some white cardstock as well because I want to sandwich everything in between that. And then again, we'll keep everything nice and secure. So we're just going to attach all of those pieces. Then we'll grab our white die cut flowers and we're going to attach that to the back. It just makes everything have a good finished look as well. So I love that. All right, I do want to stamp using the polka dot background. And so I'm going to use some Viper Simon Hurley Create ink on some green cardstock. That's going to be like our grass at the bottom. And my favorite way to use these big background stamps that are clear is to just bring my paper to the background. And I usually get a perfect stamp every time. You can use some scrap paper so that your fingers don't get inky, but it doesn't bother me. Then we're going to use some Remember Me ink by Simon Hurley Create on our blue cardstock that we've used or that we've grabbed. And we've cut that down to be four and a quarter by three and a half inches. The green piece is four and a quarter by two inches. So pull that away and that looks pretty good too. So we can attach down our green panel to the front of our flowers. So it looks like they're popping out of that, like that's grass. And then we can attach that down to the front of our gatefold card. Now I highly suggest that if you did want to do any stamping, you should do that ahead of time. I don't take my own advice. We're going to stamp later. <laughs> Pretty good at that, right? Just waiting till the last minute. That's honestly because most of the time I might have an idea in my head of how a card's going to go. And sometimes I sketch them out, but not always. A lot of times I'm flying by the seat of my pants. So there you go. I'll oftentimes sketch them out later just so that I can remember what they were like. And then I keep my little sketchbooks. And then we're doing first and second generation stamping for the thank you. So first generation's in the center. Second generation just means we didn't clean off our stamp and we stamped it again. So it's much lighter. Then I'll trim that piece down and that measures four or yeah, four and a quarter inches long, but it's pretty small, you know, in width. And then I do bring in some adhesive foam strips for the back of that. I'll put a tiny one on the back of our B, peel off the release paper on that, and we'll stick down thank you on the front. And then we'll stick down our B onto our little sunflower. How cute. And then this is where I decided I wanted a stamp on the inside. So I am going to ink up the big stamp with some shabby shutters, Distress Oxide because that stuff's pretty good for stamping. Now this is a big image, and so it may not stamp perfectly. In my case, it does not. This is why, if that's a concern for you, you want to stamp that ahead of time, making sure that you put that in maybe like a stamp positioning tool. And then I'll just cover that up with the sentiment that I plan to use on the inside. I'm not worried that it st didn't stamp perfectly. That's fine with me. So wishing you a day filled with beauty. That's going to go over the area that it's not perfect. And of course, I can't stop there. I decided to bring in some treasure chest embellishments. These are so pretty. They're little gems. And I'm pretty liberal with those. I put those all over our background. And I'll just use my pickup stick and some liquid glue to adhere all those down. And then when that's done, that's going to finish off this really fun gatefold card. I really love how this turned out. I hope you do too. If you do, hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And be sure to check out all that Trinity Stamps has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.